Hey, so um, I know that uh, some people are struggling a little bit with how to graph parabolas in class. And so um, I thought I'd make a quick uh, little video to show you how to do that. So if anybody is really worried about that, we have a quiz coming up. But also just if you'd like to know so you actually can actually be successful and not be frustrated about how to actually execute some of these pieces. Um, here's a little instructional video on how to execute that. So we're going to start by looking at just what a parabola is. So a parabola is um, actually just hit the wrong thing. Sorry about that. Let me fix that. Let's do this. Let's reshare that with a different screen. Sorry about that. I'm going to share that with this guy right here. So we've got this parabola right here and hopefully you can see that. I've got this nice little curve right here and sometimes we can add extra little pieces like if I put a plus four it'll be the same parabola but scooted up four units. Um, if I put a minus two here, it would be the same parabola, but down two units. Um, but one of the nice things that we learned in class is that although we have all of these different pieces that can move the parabola around, notice this one moved it over and down a little bit. Um, there's all these differing ways that we can make that actually come out. So what I wanted to do is just look at a couple of pieces. And one thing that I mentioned in class is the one, three, five pattern. So you'll notice that this graph right here, it crosses right here at negative two, negative six. That would be like the vertex of that problem. Um, it hits at negative two comma negative six is right at that bottom value that you see. But you'll notice from here, if you go to the right one and up one, it hits at negative one, negative five. And then you go over one, up one, two, three, and it hits a zero, negative two. And so if you kind of follow the process of that one, three, five pattern, if I could invest enough time to make sure I get my right value here for my vertex, keep in mind, there's also this thing that we called our line of symmetry, which in this case would be X equals negative two. You'll notice that we have this line right here that splits right down the middle of the graph. Maybe I could put it in green, so it's a little bit different, where the two sides of the graph are perfectly identical. So a couple of quick examples of how that would work. So I have a question that's sitting here, right here I called Q2, Q1. We're looking at this guy. It's a nice, simple parabola, again, if I did our little formula that I'm gonna do and I found my, my vertex here at negative three, <clears throat> part of my axis of symmetry, notice where the red dots are, over one up one, over one up three. So literally by counting, I can actually make a really nice parabola just by knowing what that is. So I have a second one in here too. This one's a little different. It's a two X squared. So because it has that two, things have changed just a little bit. Notice my vertex, it didn't go over one up one, it went over one up two. It didn't go one and then three, it went over one up two and then over one up six. So the one, three, five pattern got doubled. And you can see over here on the side, my vertex is right here. I went up two to zero then up six to 10, and then I went up 10, <clears throat> sorry, I went up two to get to zero, up six to get to six, and then 10 to get to 16. So my one, three, five pattern has turned into a two, six, 10 pattern, because it got moved in that way. And then my last one is Q3. Notice that there's a negative one in front. And so what would happen to my one, three, five pattern, it would now be negative one, negative three, negative five. And so we'll see that right here. Notice we have our vertex that goes over one, down one, over one, down three, and then over one, down five. So that's again, our one, three, five pattern. But the big deal is you have to find out what that vertex is, or you're not going to know what you're doing. So with that idea, let's go ahead and share it with the paper, the, vis the visualizer, as we call it, and talk about how we went about doing that. So when we go about finding all of this information, we know that A is the number sitting in front of X squared, B is the number sitting in front of X, and C is the number that is sitting out here all by itself, which is always our Y intercept. That's where it crosses the Y axis. So we have a formula that we learned in class, opposite B over two. 2a, excuse me. So if we do the opposite of b, I get 4. 2a would be 2. And so I got the number 2. 
That's awesome. So I know my vertex is going to be at two comma something. So if I were going to make a table, I would center my table at the number two. This is going to be my vertex. And we're going to figure out some other stuff. So I can move around from both sides of that. And because A is one, my one, three, five pattern is gonna stay exactly what it is. So whatever this number is, this one is gonna be one number bigger and then three numbers bigger. So we're gonna plug the number two in to the original function and we're gonna find our vertex. Let's see what happened. So if I plugged in the number two here and here where X used to be in the problem, that would give me four, take away eight plus one. Let's see, four take away eight is negative four. Negative four plus one is negative three. So my vertex is at two comma negative three. And if that's true, and that's at two comma negative three, then what I can do is I can just move up one from here. Then I can move up three from here. And then if I wanted to, I could move up five, which would get me to the number six. But a lot of times we don't even bother. I guess this would be the negative one would give me six. So notice the up one, up three, up five, and that's part of my one, three, five pattern. And you guys all do have access to Desmos, so it's not a bad thing to sometimes go over here and check out what happens if we look at Desmos. So in my question that I did, I wanted to see what happens if I tried x squared minus four x and a plus one. And keep in mind, when I did my work, I think I found the vertex to be two comma negative three. So I'm gonna put that right here, two comma negative three. And I think we did okay, there it is. There's my vertex right there. And notice my one, if I go over one up one, it would hit right here, which is the point that I had, three comma negative two, and over one up one, two, three. It looks like we did a good job on that. So we're going to go back and look at two more real quick, and then I will um, be done with our video. So here we go. Number Question number two. Notice that I changed our story a little bit. My A in this case is negative one. B is positive eight, and C is eight. So my one, three, five pattern is not going to be there anymore. It's going to be a negative one, negative three, and negative five because it got multiplied by that negative one. So our formula is opposite B over 2A. So opposite B would be negative eight. 2A would be negative two. So this ratio right here is the number four. Now we're going to go ahead and plug four into the original equation. That was opposite x squared plus eight x plus eight. And we're going to plug in this number four right here into both places. Now, this is where we have to be careful because the four squared happens before the negative. So four squared is 16, but the negative happens afterwards. Eight times four is 32, and I get eight. So putting that all together, this gives me 40. And so I have a negative 16 and a 40, which gives me 24. So my vertex for this particular problem happens at the number four, and it gives me the number 24. But as I move away from this number, it's going to go down one. Then it's going to go down three. And then, of course, the last little piece went down one, down three, and then it's going to go down five. So 20, if I go down five, I'm going to be at 15. So this graph is good, but it wouldn't fit on most pieces of graph paper, but we could check it out in Desmos to see if we did it okay. So it might be worth it because I don't know if I feel all that comfortable with what I just did. So let's see what happens if we go back here to Desmos and we change it. So I'm gonna change my problem to a negative x squared. Notice that it now looks down like a frowning parabola, plus eight x plus eight. Now you probably noticed that my, when we did our work before, we said our vertex should be at four comma 24. And you'll notice I don't see where it is because it's way up here. And what do you know? We did do a good job and it does go over one down one and over one down three. So I think we did all right. So back to our last problem, which is going to have the number two in front. 
So in this case, my 135 pattern that we've been referring to is going to be a 2, 6, 10 pattern. It got doubled. So if we start with opposite B over 2A, keep in mind my B value is going to be 4. So in this case, it's going to be negative 4. Over 2A, 2 times 2 is 4. So it looks to me like my vertex is going to happen at negative 1. This is going to be my vertex. So we're going to come in here. I'm going to replace every x with a parenthesis. That's 2x squared plus 4x plus 5, but I'm going to plug that negative 1 in here and in here. Now, order of operations says negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And putting it all together, 2 take away 4 is negative 2. 2 take away 4 is negative 2 plus 5 is 3. So it looks like I've got a vertex at negative 1, comma, 3. But that means that if I go around this problem, I'm going to move up 2. So notice I went up 2 from 3. Now I'm going to go up 6, which is going to be 11, because I was already at a height of 5. And if I kept going, my next stop would be to go up 10, which would be then 21. Now notice I went up two here, I went up six here, and I went up 10 here. And this would be a mirror image over here, so we have all of those values. So that's a real quick way of dealing with um, finding the graph of a quadratic. Hopefully that was helpful. I'll see you back in class.